Right, hiya. Okay, welcome back. Now look, as aware as I am that this belly pan build thing is dragging on and aware as I am of audience retention, I want to just get cracking on this. Uh, I've got two more jobs to do on it and I want to just get them done and move on because I've already started to accumulate the materials for the, belly, uh, the tail unit build and plan out what I'm going to do with regard to the frame and stuff underneath it. So lots of things. I'm already moving onto that. My brain is already moving into the tail section. I'm really keyed up for it and I want to, I've got ideas which I want to start getting creative with. This, I don't want to cut corners. I don't want to do it wrong. I don't want to shortchange you as the viewer to this not being finished and also most importantly of all, I don't want to come back to the wretched thing. I want to call it done and the next thing I want to do is be putting bodywork and paint on it and that's when I do that to all of it, including the tail. So today all I'm going to do is I've got some gussets to weld in. I'm not going to make this a long-winded video like the usual half an hour things. I just want this to be quite quick to show you the next stage because as again, it's dragging on, it's getting a little bit boring. How many more things can you do to one belly pan? How, much more, how many more hours of your life can you waste on a wretched belly pan? So I just want to put some gussets in it today for strength and uh, if I get time, I may just put some of the lip wire beading around the outside, which is the other job of the two. And when those two jobs are done, it's done, it's on the bike, it's a coat of silver, just to protect it from rust, because it's now coming in the winter and it will be humid in the garage and it will start getting rusty if it's just left. I've got these on the bike, they've been left in paint for that reason. So coat of paint once those two jobs are done. And today is the first one of those two. If I get time, I'll do the other one. I'm not sure, it's nine o'clock now. I've only got till 12 because I'm working this afternoon, uh, day jobs, so I'm just going to see if I get what I can get done and make as much progress as possible because like you, I want to get onto this because I'm getting impatient. So there we go, let's get this off, I'll show you what I mean. Well, it's actually a little easier to show you in situ um, and probably easier still to show you this side. Right, so take a little look in there. Now as you can see, there's loads of room in there. Loads and loads of empty space with nothing in it. Which is what this whole concept of the belly pan is. It's to give a square bodywork feel to the engine, because as the engine, as the bike's kind of this wide at the top, it comes down and the engine just goes narrow, narrow, narrow. It's kind of weedy underneath, so it gives a visual squareness to the bike. So anyway, down inside here, I've got all this lovely room. You get, look at all that, you get an arm in there and move it around. There's so much space in there, so I want to put a gusset across the inside. And to measure how much room I've got to put this, this gusset in, uh, you know what I mean by gusset, like a strength piece across there to stop it flexing, to stop this movement. Although, once it's bolted in, as you can see, there ain't much movement. I just want it there because it's just better to have it than not. Um, so the idea is to mark where I've got space. Um, so just a little pencil, pretty straightforward. Uh, come here, that there is the side of the sump. So if I come to about, <laughs> let's get back in there with a pencil, right. Works as a drain, look, pencil drains out. So if I come there, that's up against the side of the sump, there. So if I take a line down, like that, and mark that on the belly pan, probably can't see it, but there's a line there now. Oops, where are we? There's a pencil line there now on the belly pan that represents sort of like the up and right of the sump. So if I come that way, crikey, I can come up as much as I want. Forget that little rubber hose, that won't be in the way. I come up to there, which is the water pump, run up to here, and then I'm interfering with these vents. I'm actually out of the vent, so, you know, just mark up as high as you like. Just mark a line there. I'm going to go forward a bit. All right, so that's given me... Oops. Just getting some baseline readings, really, as they say. There you go. I do the same the other side while it's in situ, bolted up still. And it's related to the engine as where it's going to be. This one's a bit harder to get in. Still get a hand in there, um, if you can see. But again, up against the side of the exhaust on this one. That's the exhaust there. Um, where is it? There's a little pencil. So just mark there. That kind of represents, whoops, can you see? There we go. That represents where the exhaust will sit. And I want to come up this side 
again to about where the vent is. Right, now I've kind of, yeah, it's come out a little bit. So now I've marked it, I'm gonna get it off, put it on the bench and I'll show you what those marks look like and I'll see for myself at the same time. Right. Okay, there we are. Uh, let's muller up those marks a bit so you can see them. Bring it all in. Right. So those pencil marks are kind of there and there and definitely there. And about there. So what they represent is a square. If you take, um, there we go, piece of that wire. Let's show you. So what those square marks represent there to there is the ability to do practically that with a gusset um, and, and that won't foul on anything and the same goes for that side sort of, this is a bit big but you know like a square I could weld a, a piece of sheet metal in there that shape um, you don't have it square like that you probably have it more like that across but you can weld a piece across there and I've got that much space so I can go up that much and across that much and that's all space. And the principle of all this is, come out of there. The principle of this is, is to prevent that. It's to put a little bit of gusseting across there and across there, just with some thin sheet metal. It doesn't have to be much because it's thin sheet metal D. Um, it will be, it's, I think it's torsional strength. I'm not sure, but whatever it's called, it's, it will be pushing and pulling against. So you take a piece of metal and it, it won't be twisting that way or bending that way. It will just be pushing and pulling against the sheet metal. So that piece of metal cut correctly and welded in should hopefully prevent this, which when it's bolted up, it doesn't do, but it, it will also hold it stiffer and any amount of movement causes ringing and vibration. So it will mean less need for jollop to be spread around the inside of it to absorb sound less of it anyway so I can keep the thing lighter and not too heavy. So let's cut some sheet metal and get it flattened out ready for these two gussets and see what we can make them look like.
Close up look and then we'll put it on the bike. Uh, what I've done, right, okay, I'm gonna answer this one first. Loads and 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 loads of you said that these covers need some sort of adjustment, some sort of doing again, doing differently, doing more to. And yes, you're right, I totally agree. I've I've gone through my head in the last week with shed loads of ideas welding the back edge in so it's completely one piece but what that's going to do is fill up with leaves and mice and rats and stuff so that ain't going to work uh, it's got to be removable for cleaning purposes if nothing else uh, so what I've done there just quickly is just taken off uh, all the all the spacer nuts at the back so snuck the back right in against the job like that and then the front further out you know so basically staggering them that way but honestly they're not finished I've got to do something with that I'll come up with something you know I even toyed with taking the covers off and binning them and thinking of some way of making because you know I keep looking at those holes and they kind of got a I don't know jet fighter plane look about them dum de dum but you know uh, whatever I'll get there I'll come up with the right solution but at the moment that's cool I think when they're bodywork, they'll look great. I know I won't do them in a contrasting colour. They're going to be matched and they're going to be visible. That's the whole idea of them. If I wanted to make a statement of them, I'd have done something else. But I yet, I yet may do something else. Anyway, there's the braces for today. Stand on tiptoe. It's about. There's the braces for today. Um, the welds went okay on this. Oh, I'm down. <laughs> the welds went okay. As you saw, a couple of them just popped through. And you just put a piece of copper on the back, just fill them up, it's not too much of a problem. And where, you, where I've welded that, it's, it's got a little, um, just an imperfection there. And I don't want to keep grinding, there's no reason for that. A little bit of filler over that, a tiny little bit of filler will just cover that, it's not a problem at all. Um, I may even put some solder in it or something, because I want this thing quite improved. Now, that's stopped a lot of this flex, that's literally halved it. Um, when you do that flex now, you can kind of see this middle bit here, this mounting point there, is flexing up and down. And these two at the front are flexing in and out as well. So when it's off the bike, yeah, it's still flexing about. The only flex was in those bulbous corners. And those little webs now will stop that altogether. And I drill holes in them because I know I'll get nagged my pants off for airflow. And that's really why I've put those in there. A, to cut down on the amount of metal, there's no need for too much, and they're fine because they, their strength is rendered to the job that way on. So their strength is in their in and out movement like that. Straight on like a blade rather than twist, twist or torsional strength. So they don't have to be thin, they don't have to be thick rather, and they don't have to be particularly tough or beef. They're fine like that, and they're so heavily welded in that that forms a real nice gusset in there and there's nothing like a nice gusset let's put it on the back
All right, that's that tidied up. Let's give you a look at it on the bike. You can't really see a great deal of sort of extra stuff that's done, unless you come this side. It's kind of visual there. I really, really like that. That really has the look of kind of the, ins the internals of an aircraft about it. I absolutely love that. Absolutely love it. I will cover the little tacks with some of the grey mastic stuff or possibly some, I don't know, because I want that visual. I like that. I want that staying or visible, should I say. But there it is. It's a lot tougher now. You can kind of, let's see the other one. Uh, in there, not really, but it works. It's one of those things, a lot of what you do on a project is unseen and that's four hours of unseen work. And it's now, oddly enough, when I bought it the front ones on, they brought it in and when I bought it that, that single underbolt under there, that kind of pushed it up in the middle and it brought the sides out. So it gave this here about five mil more flex outwards, but that's now been prevented by the gussets inside. So it's much more rigid now but it's now tapping on that because it's closer. That was flexing out under its own sort of shape and the way the mounts are, it just flexed it as it bolted up, but now it doesn't. It's resisting that and it's just bolting up tight, but it's now tapping that. And that uh, goes with that one. I think these were the mounts for that plastic Tupperware box that went on the side that was for the overflow for the radiator. And as going back in time, if you know what we've done, there's Evans waterless coolant in there, so no overflow tank now. Um, so I will, as I don't need that, I'll, I'll grind that off, that little casting. Simply it's one of these. And I may even grind that one off. I don't know, scary business. Because I don't really want to paint. Anyway, another time. Right, that looks great. And I'm really happy with it. But I have a request, I have a, uh, an ask about this. And what I want to do is kind of show you this and see what I mean. Give you some of my thought process and see what you think. I want you to share me some of your thoughts on this. I've got an idea. All right, so it goes a little bit like this. Um, these covers, what do you think? As I said just a minute ago, just 10% of me saying they're kind of spoiling the lines. You see, this tank follows the tank above and this Take, take, without this on, that inner scallop there is what matches the scallop above. They mirror each other perfectly and putting the panel on, although I've snuck that in nice and close now, that's probably going to stop it working to any level of efficiency. So part of me is saying, do we need to just get rid of them and rethink this? The holes that I drilled to bolt them on are relevant. I can just plug them up. That's not an issue. I just plug weld those up and, and, and run them over. Um, but the actual holes as vents, you see, that's the way the bike travels at that angle and the vents are at that angle. So part of me is saying, do they actually need anything at all? Or is it cool to simply see the exhaust through them? I don't want mesh, gauze, tea, tea strainers or any crap like that over them because honestly it just collects rubbish. It, it just fills up with dust and grit and you can't get it out and I don't want that. I've done it before. I'd, on the exhaust for the scrambler so I, I don't know you know there's loads of your suggestions coming in for this stuff loads and saying you could do this could do that somebody said louvers uh there's the street fighter builders out there now watching this and saying they love the build and then you just get the butt and, then, and i would have done this and this and i love your ideas honestly because your second eye on it is all valuable to me it's it's a free resource i value it more than you could possibly know i truly do if people are being insulting then we just have some fun with them and, and f them off but those 99.9% .9 of you who have constructive criticism that yeah mm, 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 what do you think that's the thing what do you think these are let's paint on there are these vent covers spoiling the shape and pointless and 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 you know what I'm saying so some some criticism some idea, just your opinion underneath if the one on there and just the holes showed and I haven't got holes anywhere. I've said this to a few of you who've said just leave them off. I haven't got holes anywhere else on the bike. But I haven't done the tailpiece yet. So when I do the tailpiece, perhaps I could pick the holes up in the tailpiece design, thus legitimizing them as part of the overall picture. And I've still got to do a front mudguard slash fender, and that could pick up some holes as well. So the whole thing, the whole bike could take on that theme of 
sort of super legera, you know, with the holes drilled for the lightness. Certainly where you see those gussets, that, that's, that's what's inspired me to this. Those gussets show, especially on that left hand side, when you see that, you see those holes in there, there's that internals of an aircraft kind of look, you know, like the inside the aircraft wing with all the holes drilled for strength uh, and, and, and lightness. And I think, I don't know, I don't know, it's all right. So just give us an opinion, what do you think? I don't have any problem just losing these and binning them. They're spare steel, I can use them for something else. So I tend to uh, recycle everything, so that's not a problem. And the time spent doing them, research and development. <laughs> Call it what you like. But give us a second opinion. So what do you think? Just in, the, just in the comments box, do these vents spoil this line? And would this whole thing be better if it didn't have anything bolted onto the outside of it? Work. But like I said, the holes, the, the bike travels in that direction, and the holes are facing that way. They're kind of side on. So they're going to take air straight in, uh, uh, even the tiniest bit of movement, at whatever speed. So, don't know, what do you think? Let me know. All right, so there we are. I said, let me know on that. Um, one more job left on this, strictly speaking, if I'm gonna leave those covers on. If the general consensus of opinion is kind of going with what I'm thinking, that maybe they come off, then there might be a little bit more to do. It'd be creative, interesting, and hopefully take that from the uncertainty that I feel about it now to a fine, proud certainty that I absolutely love it a bit like the nose cone, which I'm 110% happy with. That, probably about 80%. I'm just not loving it uh, at the moment. So let me know, like I said. Um, if that's, once that's done, I'm moving straight onto the tail. There'll be a little bit of work to do on the frame, first of all, the actual subframe itself. I've got to make some changes to the shape of it, lop off some stuff, reshape it, reweld it into a different shape, and then I can start making the skin for it out of steel. And we've already ordered some of the parts and some of the donor material for that tail, which is all gonna be steel. None of this body is gonna be plastic. Only the fiberglass and stuff that are used to make that top thing. And I can live with that. Um, there we are, it's enough arms. All right, I'm gonna call it done. Four hours on a, on a day, I've got to go to work in a minute. Is it one o'clock now? Nine, 10, 12, one. Yeah, four hours, that's enough for one day. I look forward to your comments. Take it as you ride safe. See you next time.